Aspen, a Tony Mountain Ski Resort. The Bauhaus, a short-lived German art school. So what on earth does one have to do with the other? To understand, we have to go back. Keep going. Way, way back to Weimar, Germany, 100 years ago. The Great War was over. The hot winds of revolution were blowing. Modern life was afoot. The world had electrified, industrialized, mechanized. Into this dehumanized landscape enters Walter Gropius, a German architect with a new kind of school. One that brings fine art, craft, and industrial design under one roof to create a new aesthetic that breaks out of palaces and factories and integrates into regular daily life. The aesthetic would be a return to basics. Primary colors, primary shapes, a totally new approach to everything, from teaspoons to towers to typography. We have to pull the whole thing together. We have to destroy these separations between painting and sculpture and architecture and design and so on. It is all one. He called it Bauhaus. In English, building house, as it was about building in the broadest sense of the term. In those brief few years, what occurred there was nothing short of a creative supernova. Enter a dashing Austrian. No, not him. A painter by the name of Herbert Bayer. He came to the Bauhaus as a student, graduated to master, and then... Another Austrian painter came on the scene. Hitler hated modern art and effectively shut down the school. In the 1930s, the once grand silver town was derelict and sad. Chicago box mogul Walter Pepka and his wife Elizabeth were vacationing on their ranch in Colorado when... A drunken friend of mine said, Pussy, you would love Aspen. It's Victorian. Nothing has been changed. The people's fled the valley. There are empty houses, but roofs are leaking. It is a shambles, but the skiing is wonderful up there. Post-war America, Walter and Pussy moved to Aspen and assembled a crack team of real estate lawyers, ski instructors, and this guy, their new friend, Herbert Beyer. Painter, sculptor, designer, skier, Bauhausler. Over New York and ready for work. A new generation of skiers was on the march, and it was up to Bayer to woo them. The Bauhaus, of course, implanted in me such a sense of, of duty, you can mm -hmm. say, not to just go and paint for my own pleasure, but to devote myself uh, to um, dealing with the problem design problems of our time. Of course, skiing was only the beginning. Pepka's vision would reach far beyond the ski hill. Some might call it a moonshot, others lunacy, but to mark the 200th birthday of the great German writer Ludwig von Goethe, he invited the intellectual and corporate elite to a tent on the outskirts of town to gather, to discuss, to exchange ideas, enjoy music, to let the mountains heal wounds and broaden horizons. The Goethe Bicentennial's massive success put Aspen on the map and would become what we know today as the Aspen Institute and Aspen Music Festival. The campus is Bayer's master thesis in Bauhausian ideology. Minimal, 
functional, geometric. A very human scale, set humbly in a landscape of sublime majesty. A century ago, the Bauhaus emerged from the darkness of World War. So too did this utopic new Aspen, both institutions founded on the hope that culture and the sharing of ideas could lift us to new heights. <laughs>